Hey, it's Hubbard. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Welcome back to the About Last Night podcast. My guest today is a comedian, actor, voiceover, artist, friend, lover, um, former hand model, J.C. Penny enthusiast, Jamba Juice enjoyer. Sorry, I'm getting a spam call from the Jonathan Kite fan club. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. 15 time, I'm sorry, 1500 time ALN guest of the year, guest of every year, Jonathan Kite. Adam, I'm so happy to be here. Harrison Ford? <laughs> I, uh, Adam, I am, uh, I'm a fan <laughs> of this podcast and of Jonathan Kite. All right. It's the breathing that does it. Yeah. I always say Harrison Ford's always about to sneeze. <laughs> Hold on. Give me a second. Is there dust in this room? And Wahlberg's just about to catch yeah. the sneeze. Wahlberg is like, no sneeze in my mouth. Dude. I just ran 5K before I got here. You see, you're out of breath because you're trying to sneeze. I'm out of breath because I'm trying to find the guy that just sneezed. I don't even take public transportation. I run everywhere. <laughs> is there a movie you think you'll ever do where he's not out of breath? Yeah. What? The guy who invented the iron lung. <laughs> Guys, we're going to fix this. All those polio kids, I got this. If you became friends with Wahlberg and he asked when? you to do, when you become friends again with Wahlberg, yeah. put a pin in yeah, the D- I'm already friends with Donnie. Um, by the way, Donnie, great. Brother. No Donnie. He EP'd Return of the Mac, the show I did with Joey Mac. I went I on l- two new kid cruises. Got I know to be you did. You know I'm a die I have original New Kids in the Block t-shirts. Oh, man. When Pounds they return, up. you're coming. Brother. I said when we in were talking. your pants at the in show, my, uh, and yeah, you're coming yeah. to the show. On FaceTime with the band. <laughs> You'll uh, also I'm on be. on a cruise of my own. <laughs> You'll be so unexpectedly enamored with how good the show is. I love those guys. But it's still, because you just go. I mean, look, it's a lot of, you can't be up there pelvic thrusting into the faces of women during this current climate unless it's consensual. (laughs) Different laws. Maritime laws do not apply to wokeness. Oh, the amount of, by the way, gals that I would hear, see, uh, that were on that ship that were just like, what happens on the cruise stays on the cruise. There was a seven-year-old woman. How wet is this deck? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Guys, I think the boat sprung a leak, or at least Mary has. Am I right? Oh, you are right. There was a seven year old yeah. woman uh, the Saturday night before we docked, went down, just was like, oh, maybe I'll just stay up. There was a little tequila. Before you docked? Tequila. We'll be right back. Guys, think. We're back. Uh, Short break. There was a woman who was at the tequila bar, and she goes, she goes, I've seen you around with the band. I know you're friends with them. She goes, I'll tell you what. Take a shot. She goes, you show me where Donnie's sleeping. I'll fuck him for you. I go, I don't for think you've you. negotiated before. <laughs> what do I get out of this? And she was like, I'll fuck him for you. And I was like, oh, I have no doubt you'll do everything he doesn't want. Don't do it for me. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, you gotta, this has got to be for you. You're I'll 70. Fuck all the new kids for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right. It was, um, it was bonkers. But bonkers. That being said, Mark... Um, what was the point of that? Mark, out of breath, movie. Donnie, EP, Donnie, your show. EP, their show. Oh, pelvic thrusting, consensual pelvic thrusting. Yes. Uh, That's their new single. It <laughs> it might as well should be because it's you're watching them perform and the people go nuts. And the amount of, uh, I, there's just nobody doesn't want it. Yeah. And you go, but you have to be in a certain shape, which they all have kept themselves in an, in good enough shape to go, uh, oh yeah, you can still do that. Because yeah. look, it's like, you know, if you put on fifty pounds, nobody's gonna want a chubby guy pelvic thrusting. Unless it's Kenny Rogers. We'll be right back. We're back. We're back. Uh, yeah. The, well, is he still alive? Yeah, my mother saw him in Nashville 
went one of the last times that Dolly Parton performed live. But so she's a diehard Dolly Parton fan. Wow. Went with one of her best friends. Went to go see a show that she thought was Dolly Parton show. Turns out it was a uh, farewell tour for Kenny Rogers. But they so came funny. out, you know, saying "Eyes of the Storm." You know, they they really uh, they did it. Were they up. a tandem? Dolly they sang and- they sang some uh, some duets, some hits. Yeah, and uh, it was amazing. My, th- she said it was incredible, but he doesn't move. He can't. Kenny Rogers. Well, he's the Marlon Brando. Yeah. of Pizza Hut. Was he? <laughs> was he always? Was he guitar and sing or just sing? No, he. I think he played. I think on uh, Gambler, he was. Uh, he was a guitar player. I mean, I think he was a pretty on Gambler. No end of hold on. Oh, I don't know the name. yeah, I don't know the names of songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's Gambler parentheses Alien Overlords. Isn't that the weirdest? You're like, that's what that song is called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There is. Well, I didn't even know Third Eye Blind Semi Charmed Life was about like, oh, what it's about until. Oh, uh, n- th- by the way, we never know, especially as young people. You're like, this song is about Jews controlling the media. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a weird. He, geez, Tracy Chapman. I thought Fast Car was just about you. Uh, Wanting to get out of town, but it's it is. But town <laughs> is a, a marriage contract <laughs> yeah, yeah. with your high school guidance counselor. That is, and great. it involves murder. <laughs> yeah, I would be doing that. Jim Jeffries was just talking uh, about that last night. He said it was an old bit about Michael Jackson. Basically, he's like artists would like they're pretty subliminal with or honest in their songs with what's going on with them. He's like with John Lennon. He's like was a drug addict, and he was you know help. I need somebody help. Uh, not just anybody help, whatever. I'm, you know, the lyrics were definitely a cry for help. And he goes talking about Michael Jackson with all the kid stuff, and he was yeah. just like, he's like, the writing was on the wall. I'm bad, I'm bad. I know it. You know it. Like I'm really, really bad. You know, yeah. uh, beat it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was one of the first jokes I did in London when I was studying abroad out there, and I lied my way into this comedy club. The guy brings me up. He was this bald guy who was gave me a shitty intro, and I get up there and I go, "Keep it going for Phil Collins' uh, stepbrother with Down syndrome." Just trying to like do a quick get the room back. Lost it even more. It was a charity for Down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Yee. It was bad, and uh, but he, you know, he just was like, "This guy's from L.A." You know, he bullied his way on the stage. I'm not even sure if he's funny. If he's not, hey, it's not on me. What's your name again? And I'm like, "Why would it ever have been on?" A guy I co-signed for accidentally, yeah. but wish I I'm didn't. I'm about to bring him up, but like don't. And then he was like, "What's your name again?" A- Alan Alan Gray, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And I'm screaming my own name from the back. And then I get oh, up there. Oh, I guess you got a fan. Yeah. You're like, no, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get up there, and uh, it's all just bomb, bomb city. And then I do one joke. I go, "There's that." Uh, uh, Michael Jackson just came out with uh, number one, the the uh, album of all number one hits. I go, "It has all the classics. Beat it, um, bad. Uh, you know, all right. I admit it. I licked that kid's ass." I go, which is like, and that was the only thing that got some laughs. And then I was like, and I'm back. And then I did one more thing and then lost him again. And then, uh, and then afterwards he was just Get like, off the stage, yeah. Alan Dre. <laughs> no. It's the only thing I remembered is the guy's mispronunciation. Of you. Uh, First time I ever got brought up on the comedy store and I won't name names. Somebody brought me on stage. I will. Judd Hirsch. Um, I know I'll, uh, fan, people were fans of Judd Hirsch, um, Herschel Judson, <laughs> um, um, the 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 host brought you up. The host to brought it. me up. I'm and I I won't say. And he goes, give it up for Jonathan Kike. Whoa! And by the way, by the way, not time, your name. But by the way, my name. No, no, no. Um, my stage <laughs> name is Jonathan Kike. Okay. Yeah, I had just changed it and told him that <laughs> in the wings. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I I remember, and it was one of those things where I had been friends with you know guys like you and Eric Andre and Santino yeah, yeah. for years. So I'd sort I'd hung out, but I'd never gone on stage. This was like very early on. And so I sort of even knew this guy a little bit. And I was like, there's no way. But I think he was like sort of I had gotten a spot when Tommy was there. Because yeah. Tommy was uh was he was like not auditioning me, but it was one of those things where he's like, Let me see what you can do. Yeah. And it was in the OR. And I remember getting brought on stage just to that. And I sort of like, I made a joke and I played it off or whatever and just kept rolling with the punches. But I was like, oh man, this guy is like so, he was bit, was he, he was bitter. Was he doing it to make a joke? He was doing it because I, I truly believe that he didn't like that I had a spot. Yeah. Yeah, there was a time when there were guys like that that were. Uh, and he, you're like, Nazi sympathizer, Jonathan. <laughs> I go, that's the credit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy's been to a bunch of meetings where there's only three Ks. And they're and we're not talking about baseball. 
I'm like, why are you winking? Um, have you had um, Have you had any bad? Have you done any Zoom shows? So Zoom shows, I, I hate, and it's not that I've done a couple for charity, and because um, buddies of mine who, who for like the service industry for bartenders and oh, servers cool. and whatnot, so friends of mine have reached out, and I'm like, of course, like I will definitely do these if they raise money or whatever it is. But for me, like I love the. Um, the in person, like that's something that I really uh, thrive off of that adrenaline rush, you know. Yeah. And I always I describe Zoom shows as like you're addicted to heroin, and someone gives you Advil, and they're like, "Trust us, like this will be this will hold you over for the year." Yeah, and it's like, and, and I've done a couple just to like try it out, and there was good comics on there, you know. Um, but but it was one of those things where I was like, this just isn't for me. Would you just sit down and do it? Would you even try to stand up and create some sort of a environment that felt i was put a brick behind me yeah. on the zoom brick wall yeah had a microphone wore like a jerry seinfeld 80s suit and tie oh, nice. but like it just didn't even with like you know when you hear people laughing it's just not that same because i i've been doing some socially distant shows now that yeah, they're yeah. back in la you know i see you're doing them too the energy now it's like i've been let out of prison yeah like getting out there feels like that i i it, it just feels like i could run at full speed for two hours because I really feel like that there's that really feels and I I've obviously seen you kill it's like that just feels right yeah to be on on stage and not you know and some people I've seen crushing the zoom stuff it's just not for me <laughs> there's nobody there but there's somebody there and I see you hey guys comedian Adam Ray here thanks for listening to the about last night podcast I hope you're enjoying the episode and I hope you're doing okay it's a crazy, crazy time right now. And if you're a little uneasy, I get that. And I've also got the answer, Koi CBD. Say it with me, Koi CBD. <sighs> Feels good. And it does feel good because I use all their products. I've been fucking with the fellas at Koi CBD since my circumcision. And I'll tell you this much, they're the best in the game, okay? Gummies, bath bombs, tinctures, joints, creams, oils. They got stuff for pets. Koi CBD has been giving the people what they need to feel better, to mellow out, to go to sleep right, to take away the aches and pains with the creams and oils, the bath bombs, make bathing just the best thing ever. You get a little a little radiation high from the from the bombs. I don't know what's in it, but fucking goodness and and just all sorts of it's amazing. Okay? It feels like drugs, and it's not because it's CBD. So, if you want to get these amazing products, and I know you do, because I got the Adam Ray stamp of approval, go to KoiCBD.com and put in the code ALN15 to get 15% off your first order. KoiCBD.com, the promo code ALN15 to get 15% off your first order. Do it today and start living and feeling the right way. And now, back to the episode. I just saw theme parks are going to come back, like, full uh, in... April or early May, like it just said, theme parks open. I don't even know if it's capacity. I don't know if it's like only just you know, in Wuhan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wuhan Disney. Yeah. Uh, is well, there... yeah, it's safe for them because all the characters are, are masked. <laughs> <laughs> what if they have masks on some of the characters? You think they'll do that? Like a mask on Mickey's giant ears? Yeah. Oh, stay safe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Did you ever audition for... They had, when we were both at Osbrink. Oh, I, they had I, a, a, a Mickey audition. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the first ones I think I went for. And I remember I sent, I made my agent send, our agent at the time, I go, send that one and then send one of me going, hey, uh, this is uh, Mickey. Um, boy, Goofy is a dick. And and she was like, I'm not sending that. And then I was like, I think it'll be funny if they go set me apart. And I don't think my actual Mickey is that great. And um, and the new Mickey sounded yeah <laughs> yeah the new yeah. Mickey is out. It was Eddie Pepitone. <laughs> Eddie Pepitone. Holy shit! They'll never, they'll never. Even when, and I know you know this too. When there's like a a reimagining of a character, yeah. like Winnie the Pooh or the new Muppet Babies or Ducktales, and they're no. like, do they're like you know be in the vein, do your own, do your own, but make like, it your own. The reimagined Winnie the Pooh, but still have that that poo affectation but do your own so then so you're just like, like love honey and not wear pants yeah. like what are you talking yeah. about and then you do you something get the that's strangest direction close to it and they're like nah. yeah just do the regular poo and then and then or, or you know what you but what now do one that's just your own 
t- you're like you're definitely not going to use that because if it's not even close in the you vicinity, and I go out for so much of the same stuff in terms of like not voice. I mean, yes, voice matching, but also where they're like, listen, we want to do Bullwinkle, but we don't. We want to be a new Bullwinkle, yeah. and then you hear the guy who gets it, and you're like, the guy is doing Bullwinkle, yeah, which is great. By the way, God yeah. bless, God bless, yeah. But it's like they they a direction I always said I always wanted to do a, an inside baseball like character who was a casting director for voiceovers who was like Adam so happy you're here okay we need the guy's voice to be really fun but also super serious I need him to have a high register but think about James Earl Jones you're super positive but you contemplate but you, suicide a couple times daily d- daily no, yeah it, but not. Not in the morning, at night, when you, it's like more feasible. You're an orphan whose parents are alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the, the, the amount you're of description. You're a vegetarian who loves meat. And then you get the line, and the line is only like, hello, that wasn't really it. Yeah. Like you get one word or like one line, yeah, and I go, all that direction. On. Yeah, it's impossible. But it's just like, just, I don't know. Is there a character you'd love to play if they reboot it or currently if they swapped it out like the way our friend eric bowser has taken over daffy Amazing. bugs like is there somebody like that you'd like to uh i always wanted to be in thundercats whoa yeah good call yeah who well, i could do a lot of them i could do panthro lionel he's oh always a mechanic and he's got numb chucks oh my god He's like, and then Lionel, Lord of the Thundercats. He always <laughs> talked like he was a beat poet that could never get hired anywhere. That's fucking amazing. I, dude, I love Thundercats. Bring that Snarf. back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lionel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Snarf. the. Um, who's that guy? That's um. What actor is that? Uh, Meryl Streep. We'll be right back. And we're back. We're we googled back. it was Meryl Streep. <laughs> Can you do a Meryl Streep? Lionel, Lord of the- <laughs> I could do her on Thundercats. She wasn't even Chitara. People don't know that. That's I. Does anyone do a Meryl Streep? Yes. Um. Uh. Chloe Finneman does. Oh, uh, Feynman on SNL. On SNL. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. There's got to be people out there that, and I want to ask you: Are there people that you've tried when you and you go, man, just not, I, not in my register, or I'm doing it as close. Gosling. Yeah, because I think that there's something that he a he's from Cornwall, Ontario and um, uh, in Canada, but he talks like he's from Jersey. Right. And he always like sort of has that like broken thing about him. You know? Yeah, but it's not. But with his pitch, because he talks so much and he's been the leads in so many films, you know what he sounds like. It's not like Christian Bale where you can't figure out, you know, where he's trying to tax evade from this year. Right. You're like, he's well, she's British, whatever. But they with him he's so specific where you i i could tell like if i could nail it and it's one that i've tried forever and i just can't do it yeah is there if you get to that point where you get stuck and you're like all right it's not gonna happen do you does that make you then go all right no more of uh like how quickly into trying do you well you, i have i always do bits you know because like i i had a joke where i do micro because i what, when i started doing stand-up i was doing like all impressions right and then you know, quickly I was like, well, I, I'm a writer and I do jokes. Yeah. It was just that when I was starting out, uh, people like yourself, like people would really were vouching for me, which was amazing. And then when, because there are so few impressionists that do stand up, yep. the comedy community was incredibly kind to me because they were like, oh my God, can you get on stage and do the impressions? Yeah. Cause then it'll add variety yeah, to yeah. whoever was booking the show. Totally. And then after a while, you know, and then obviously I was touring and all this stuff. And um, and so, but I didn't want to talk about two broke girls and I didn't want to do impressions because right. I thought that I really could write like good jokes. Yeah. And so I realized I would do these micro impressions to sort of make up for people who had come to see me do impressions. Just I'm to like, get, give them something, right? I'll do like 10 or 20 of them, but like yeah. super quick. Yeah. And I was trying to write a joke for Leonardo DiCaprio or um, Ryan Gosling, where I was like, here's my impression of the world's least relatable comedian. And it was Leonardo DiCaprio getting on stage being like, you know, uh, you ever been in uh, Richard Branson's boat and like you can't figure out which like top 10 model to bang, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like and then it's like that he that these guys are so unrelatable and yeah. I had like a routine sort of written oh, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's him doing yeah, stand-up. yeah, doing yeah. stand up oh, or being you. like yeah it, that he's like isn't it weird you can't figure out what Tesla to drive today, and um and then he would always end with uh with uh, climate change is real yeah and um <laughs> but it was one of those things where I, and I thought about doing sort of because you know you could do I, that for a bunch of people you could do that for Statham you could do for guys that are um you know not uh, yeah like, Statham is like you ever uh, let me ask you something all right is it you. You ever, you ever do like a hundred push-ups, you know what I mean? He gets it, right? 
and then you do 150. <laughs> but you can't do 151. Am I right? Is that crazy? Has anybody ever done that? It's you ever like switch your protein and you realise, oh my God, I've been eating whey this whole time. I thought I was eating egg white protein. Is that, hey, don't you fucking move. <laughs> Lock the doors. <laughs> Lock the doors. We're not leaving this place until I finish my Tonight Show 5. Please. <laughs> what? Guys, you ever do a roundhouse kick? He's showcasing? And you didn't listen. Guys, the book is here. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead about your roundhouse kick joke. Am I right? Then you start crushing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you mother. <laughs> Uh, but they like the most of the least relatable guys who sort of who have their their because I I imagine like it's like the Queen of England trying to do stand up. Yeah. That her life is like, you know, you ever have one of your grandsons marry someone black and then accident racism comes out and you're like, I don't. <laughs> OK, I haven't watched the interview yet. Is But you're on Instagram. Yeah. And I've seen I get the the, the footnotes, the cliff notes. Yeah. The tidbits. Yeah. I see headlines. I see. So what happened? The queen is racist? Well, they had, said, Markle, they had said something that sh they were asking how dark the baby would be. That that was a, a question from the camp of the royal family. That's such a weird... Why, why do they want to know? She's like, show me on this art value scale. <laughs> Unless Where am it's I? Like, a, a, like they have money on it. Who like the, yeah. It's a weird family bet. I do feel like families that are that rich have so much downtime and so it's so monotonous that they're just like... What's the over under on ten? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, listen, people like that. I think that there's like Pierce Morgan quit, you know, Good Morning London or whatever yeah, that show is because he got into an argument defending the Queen, and so I think, you know, I, I don't About know her. Yeah, wanting not to know being how racist. Jesus. Yeah, I have. So I don't queen, know. Also, the Queen is how old? Uh, forever. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point. She's in her 90s. Yeah, and not the 90-year-olds. Look, my Aunt Shirley is pushing 90 and still very much clicking and ticking and uh, is still suggesting creams and ointments to me as if I'm dealing with the same. You know when your elbow clicks and it makes your left side of your butt cheek feel not as smooth as the right? No. Well, I found a cream. You're, you're, it, she, wait, what's, who is this? Your Aunt Shirley? Aunt Shirley, yeah. Is she an Avon woman? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. She totally. should be. Yeah. She is... Uh, yeah, and and you know, has gotten through a stroke. Is um, you know, uh, good for her in a home. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go see her. I didn't this mean weekend. to say it on the good for her, like because you like, got through a stroke and I was about to talk, and then you're like, she's in a home. Good for her. <laughs> yeah. You're I like, think she guys, we'll edit this out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they uh, although the last time I went there and had the dinner that they had, it was pretty, and she was like pimping out the dinner pretty hard, and it was like. It was prison food. Dude, it's the snot from Matrix. Yeah. It was. She's like, doesn't it taste like boys and berries? <laughs> Surely these are these are your boogers. No, it tastes like <laughs> corn on the way out. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I here's the thing I have to say just about the royalty the royal family. I don't assume yeah. people are racist one way or the other. I mean, you know, KKK, sure. That's a yeah. pretty safe assumption. But when you it doesn't surprise me, not that I thought that the royal family was racist or not racist, but when those comments came out, there's like sort of this like shock and awe that's sort of rippling across the world. And I'm going, are people that surprised? Yeah, it's like I the mean, same thing on. with Paula Deen, like, or with the Duck Dynasty guys being homophobic. Like, it just, yeah, she's a super old, rich white lady yes. that's so far removed from life. I mean, fuck, is she, uh, do you think she's ever Googled something? Uh, well, so, did you, do you watch The Crown? Black babies. How black can they be? Black, That's yeah. The only thing she searched. Will my, no, she and how Googles. old is Val Kilmer? <laughs> <laughs> is Val Kilmer still alive? <laughs> yeah. She Googles, um, she Googles, how black will baby be? <laughs> You just like see her Google history. You're like, Jesus. <laughs> we guys, we got her. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you, but I have to imagine, like, especially with people, because we talk about racism, hopefully every generation, um, are we going to cue We Are the World? Um, but every generation, you're hoping that we become a little less racist, you know? More tolerant, that, it, yeah. that it takes time, right? So you have to imagine a woman who is put almost 100 years old, yeah. who has lived in that type of environment because yeah. you think about even like 50 years ago when she was 40 oh my god i mean it's like well, so then people are like can you believe she's racist and i go yes yeah. are you having a, a, a seizure or yeah. brain aneurysm right now what are you talking about and but the, on the 
flip side, it should be easy, you would think, to go, all right, shift your ideals, your uh, values, your just, you know, be more aware in a world that allows you to be more aware and have things, you know, and, and information at your disposal and the immediacy of just being able to go, hey, it's people, everyone kind of thinks and feels like this now, and it's weird to say stuff like that. But guess what? If you've been living that way for yeah, however many years, maybe she is just. I think that was number one. She's the definition of sheltered. Yeah, I mean, and so and what you know, he, like seeing sort of the crown, which the 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 um, which I love. Um, is it great? It, I think it's fantastic. It's about that time. It's about her whole life. Queen Whoa. Elizabeth is this fascinating. Of uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, is this fascinating woman, and there's not a lot talked about when she took over because her father passed away, who was the King of England, King George, during World War II, and so he was sort of him and Churchill, you know, were like the two figureheads, one politically and one the monarch, and it's amazing to see this woman's life, but you sort of realize. Anybody that doesn't think that they're sheltered, I mean, all the goings on behind the scenes, I mean, think about people who are, there are yes men and women in everybody's life, right? You got to think about anybody um, who's like successful, they, they keep a team around them and you're positive. You yeah. shelter them from certain things. Yeah. Not to saying that like you, you like delete all the tweets, like after, you know, somebody has a bad game. It's not that like, I don't think that like Baron Davis's buddies are like, man, stay off Twitter. Yeah. But like, you know, there's an idea that, and, and she is of that, of the maximum level because the people who are working for her think they are working for the country. And so for them, it's like, she's so sheltered by the way the world works and sort of what the crown is doing in a very, very skewed way is like, well, she did visit all of the sort of places that England colonized. So mm. she went all over the world or Philip, her husband did in capacity. But at the same time, you're going on fucking yachts. Yeah. You have 17 changes of clothing. It's like, it's like, I, I, honest to God, it's like, is this a share concert? <laughs> and it's like, and for them, that's not real life. So by the way, the fact that she is sort of removed from those sort of things and yeah. people are like, how could that be? And I go, do you not know anything about this woman? I know. She's so removed from real life. And where do you think she gets her updates? Is somebody coming in being like, hey, Will Smith is uh, jump bungee jumping into the Grand Canyon on YouTube? Hey, who's Will Smith? Well, uh, is he, is he Geraldine's boy? <laughs> and... <laughs> And how dark will that boy be? Yeah, but he doesn't. Oh. She doesn't even know Will yeah. Smith. She goes, "What a lovely white man! Yeah. Who is he?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, out but of but it. she doesn't. And and the thing about it, there's no, there's no. I don't think she cares. Like she's somebody. That's what, that's what I was going to ask too. Is that at what point do you get to almost a hundred, to where you go? Don't I deserve? Haven't I earned the right to to like, be racist? No, hilarious. <laughs> or to be to just, but to not be as. You know who said that? Thomas Jefferson. He did. Um, a little too much. You know, he play- wanted to put that on money. <laughs> Tom Hanks playing Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Ow. 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 I, haven't I lived? <laughs> and haven't I done enough for this country? Today's episode of the About Last Night podcast is brought to you by 5-4 Clothing and the Menlo House. If you know anything about me, you know that I like clothes. I love to buy them. I love to wear them. That's what they're for. And you only look good if you feel good, right? That's where 5-4 Clothing comes in. I've been fucking with 5-4 Clothing for years now. They got this company, Menlo House, that's got 5-4 New Republic Grand Running Club and Melrose Place all under the Menlo House banner, and it's a baller clothing company for dudes. They've got t-shirts, shirts, jackets, sweaters, jeans, pants, shorts, activewear, shoes, accessories, and more. And what you do is you give them your sizes, okay, your fit and your style, and they curate the perfect package for you and send it to you monthly. If you want to join the club, the Menlo Club Monthly, it's $59 a month, and you get over $240 worth of apparel. Again, it's the shit. There's other brands out there and companies that do this, but I only fuck with the Menlo House because, well, they're the best. You know, the clothes always fit me perfectly, and I always get compliments on the jackets, the shirts, just got some new hoodies and pants, and they fit me to a T, and that's what you want in your clothes. So, got a special deal for you guys right now. If you go on over to themenlohouse.com, M-E-N-L-O, house.com and use the promo code 40 menlo ALN you're going to get $40 off your first month for your discount package okay $40 off the first month and that includes the arrowhead button down plus the cali chinos and more so go to themenlohouse.com use the promo code 40 menlo ALN 40 M E N L O A L N and get $40 off your first month all right start looking good and feeling good and you can't do that unless you're in 54 clothes Jefferson did what again? What was his contribution? Uh, well, he was a president, right? But he, but and oh, he, why am I getting him? 
You're thinking of uh, you're thinking of Alexander Hamilton. No, I'm thinking of a Thomas or a Jefferson that invented something. Thomas Edison. There it is. Thomas Edison was the craziest, most competitive guy in the world. Yes, he <clears throat> would put people out of business. Guy. Yes, and he like he sabotaged. <clears throat> so one of the reasons that we have Hollywood over here is that they got away from Thomas Edison's men. He would send these dudes to sabotage, like break shit and beat shit up. Yeah, like the Foot Clan and Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah. He was the <clears throat> original Shredder. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So glad we got here. You and I are on, <laughs> you and I are the Nicolas Cage national treasure of micro fake history. It's like, that's why we're in Hollywood. <laughs> the yeah, wait, do Cage discovering that Thomas Edison is the original shredder. Whoa. Guys, you hear what happened in Nikola Tesla's factory? Uh, uh, there was a, uh, 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 a uh, foot. A foot was there. Oh, no. Guys, here's what I, uh, I just uh, discovered. I think Shredder <laughs> is a, uh, 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 is a, uh, a descendant of Thomas uh, 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 Edison. Oh, my God. Why do I feel like I haven't seen that to its full extent? The fucking him holding on, like getting, that's in every Cage movie. He's, uh, 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 uh. Ah! He, I mean, he's, just, he, 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 he's trying to, uh, 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 figure it out. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Like in Family Man when he's learning that Hilarious. he, like, your dad sells tires. I'm a tire salesman. Wait, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, uh, uh, uh. He always is yeah. bewildered. It's <laughs> like, the only reason I think, like, my Nicholas, because one of my first impressions is I have the same, like, bewilderment in my eyes. Yeah. Where he, he sort of, uh, 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 can't bill, uh, leave it. Like, he's, uh, sort of, uh, what? <laughs> like, it's, it's sort wait, of wait, like. Wait. Here's Cage walking into McDonald's. I'm the guy behind the counter, and we've changed the, the extra value menu. All right. Uh, I, hey, welcome uh, to McDonald's. Can I please take your order? Uh, hold on. I uh can I help you? Yes, I I would like a uh uh a McRib. Uh, well, the McRib is now uh, a part of it's a it's its own thing. It's not on the extra value menu anymore. So just so you know, it's uh wait 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 what? Well uh well you can still uh, get it. You just have to get it separately and then add the fries. I uh, uh, uh hold on. I I want to make it a meal. I do not want to pay extra. Uh, <laughs> the, the richest guy in the world is buying dinosaur skeletons he won't pay extra <laughs> yeah yeah he is so one of my favorite people in the world by the way yeah he uh i know people like love to like niche like him i love nicholas cage you gotta go all the way back to it's the best. it sucks that we do in this business it's like a what have you done for me lately Fucking what's a, the I last thing you, saying that what's to the somebody? last thing you did and i guess rightfully so i mean it's but you, you know, were talking about it earlier <laughs> when you said the amount of stuff, like when Broke Girls came out, I mean, obviously cable was great and there was a lot of that yeah. stuff, but network television was still, it's different Poppin', than it is today. Yeah. I mean, obviously there were still good shows on network television, but there's so much content out there. And that's what I'm curious about with like Broke Girls and now Stop Dad, You're Embarrassing Me. Dad, Stop Embarrassing Dad, Me. Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me on Netflix, April 14th. Yeah. With Jonathan Kite and Jamie Foxx. And David Allen Greer. Yeah, dude, it's unbelievable. And uh, and you play Jamie's... Best friend. I mean, what's crazy about that, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again, is that, you know, when you're a good dude... Yeah. And you work hard, and you're, like, you're, you're fun, you find your spots to also, like... Because when you and Jamie met was through what again? It was... I auditioned for a sketch show that he did, right. like... 12 years ago right that was on fox um it was it was very very short-lived but you know you've been on sketch shows but you made an impression yeah and that impression was vince vaughn hi <laughs> hey jamie my man how are you um is that the one that put it over the top with him you know so it's interesting the one that he actually really loved because the thing about jamie is i don't think people realize like his ability to be great at everything he's he's also the best at being in the moment so like when i met him you know and there was you know there there was a lot of um they sort of didn't know what they wanted. They, they wanted like variety. They wanted people, you know, same when you were on Mad TV, right? They just want funny people who have their own voice, who can create and write for themselves. Right. And when I met 
in this, they had this like third, you know, and right. I don't know how many times you auditioned for Mad TV, but on the third, Lunch. yeah, they, we auditioned four times, I think at least, or five times. Wow. And this was the third one. I met Jamie, but we didn't, we weren't told that he was going to be there. They're like, just come over to Sunset Bronson. No, no, no. Where I don't know where it was. And they're like, we're just going to go over your material before you test, right? right? That's what they sold cast, casting <laughs> told my agents. So I go in there and it's just the two executive producers. And the third executive producer, who, by the way, is James Foxington. And um, for real, yeah, he was in the room and you and they did not tell us this. And so he was like, what's up, man? How are you? And I was just like, great. How are you? Like, so cool. Like, this is I was like, I, you know, I'm just yeah. being honest. This is fucking incredible. Yeah. Like, we weren't told you were going to be here. Yeah. And he's like, so what are you going to do? He goes, I heard you can do a lot of voices and stuff. And I was just like, I go, uh, why don't you tell me who you want me to do? And then he put down the piece of paper that he had in his hand. He folded it and he put it down. And he was like, what do you mean? And, he, and I go, I'll do any voice that you want me to do. And I'm I sorry, go, this is for the Netflix show or no? The sketch no, show. this is the sketch show. Okay, great. And so I was like, he's like, well, can you do? I go, anybody. I go, you just yell him out and we'll do a scene right now. And he like sat up in his oh, chair man. and you, because he loves to play. He does. He is like, a, he is not a guy. But so do you. I love it. And we recognize that, I think, in each other. So he likes, I remember him sitting up and being like, man, all right. And then. You think nobody else did that? I have, you know what's funny is I actually have no clue because, yeah. you know. when That's a big, because that is a, just listening to you say that, easier said than done thing to just say to Jamie Foxx, like, like, let's do it. Like, what do you want me to do? First of all, I'll do anything. Yeah. And then. And trusting that you can do that yeah. and, and make an impression and then saying, let's jump in and asking him to engage with you like that. Well, I'm also a go for broke kind of guy because I was somebody who was like in my mind. And by the way, whether or not this was true, I I don't know. There's there's no way to hype it, you know, to quantify this. But I was like, if Jamie likes you, you're going to move forward. And if he doesn't think you can do it, because I always said. Jamie is the only one who had been on a uh, like, obviously, the facts and Adam who are incredible. They were other producers on the show. But Jamie was on in Living Color as a as a star. Yeah. And there are very few like Dana, obviously you're very close with Dana. My favorite people love to give advice about things that like it's like people give Tom Brady advice and I go, Did you even play football? And yeah. you're like, No, but I've watched a lot. I go, mm, different thing. Yeah. And so Jamie, like being able to connect with somebody that way, because obviously I have never done any of those shows up until that point. But the, his opinion for that reason alone, because my favorite shows growing up were not in any order, but were The Simpsons and were in Living Color. Yeah. That was like those were my two yeah. jams. I said, you know, and like always my Sunday night was taken for those two. And so to be able to connect with somebody that I grew up like really admiring for for so many reasons but like specifically on that show when I was when I was really young I was like let's do it and if he goes I don't want to improv with you just tell me what you do you know I go great let me do that yeah. but I there was something within me that's like hey man let's do something right now and he was like great and he just started shouting guys names out and I would just do bits wow. and then I would talk to him sometimes and if he liked the joke he would like look around the room and he go, what, what was that? What? What'd you say? Yeah, yeah. He goes, Nicholas K, what do you, what did you mean about the McRib? And I was like, oh, you know, and I would like go off on it. And he'd be like, wait, the what? And he would like, you could tell that he was like, he loves, he's such a guy who like gets in there, yeah. you know, like, and, 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 and it's like to have a guy in that position with that talent, like also want to be a part of it. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's going to help your chances because he's obviously has a lot of influence on who's going to be a part of it or yeah and really it's smart too because you know you do realize after a certain point that you know one opportunity is just one opportunity and that there's th that one thing could be it but like yeah. you always want to be consistent and 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 represent yourself in the best way in that one thing because you know exactly for what's happening you made an impression on them that show didn't uh become what you want it to be sure. but but he remembered you. You kept in touch enough, right? And then, uh, yeah. and then this comes along, and and I'm sure that factored in where it was like, oh shit, I like that guy. I, you know, the ability to jump in and play, yeah, because that matters. How you're going to be on set, and which, also think about the the type of environment that he's putting together, where it's like. You know, originally, um, you know, uh, David Allen Greer was not a part of the cast, yeah, and then when he got in the cast. You're like that guy is as good as anybody at doing that shit. I mean, he's so he is also yeah yeah. It's like you know, I mean the, the I mean you know, 
it, it's unreal. The talent level on wow. set, you're just like, this is nuts. Do you find yourself, because you are, you do this on the Bellman just effortlessly where it's like holding court, just recognizing a moment. All, like there was that time on stage when we had a bunch of extras in the final scene of the oh Bellman. My and God. You, we, you were doing a couple things and then I just was like, all right, I'm going to jump in and kind of just like, throw up some some uh some lobs and yeah. we just went into this thing and it yeah. was like back and forth and you just jumped into basically just taking over what was happening filling the moment and fucking just making you know a couple hundred extras well just the cameras remember laughing. they weren't working yeah the cameras in the most pivotal scene with the most amount of people yeah that needed everyone's attention the cameras just stopped working on the bellman and we're on stage and they with couldn't this, figure like, out why yeah with this like recognition of like crowd audience people sitting there just looking at us they're all doing what anyone does as an extra in a movie i know i've done it where you just like at a certain point, you're just like watching the actors and being like, and observing and, you know, seeing what they're doing. But it was like, it felt weird just to stand up there and they're sitting there. Yeah. And then you started saying some stuff and then I just started saying some stuff back. And so when you're around David, Alan Greer and Jamie, yeah. are you feeling comfortable to do that as much? Or do you try to like- I'm trying, you know what it is? I think that I, I look at it as I like being on a team and I don't, I, I try to uh, contribute, but not like be overbearing. Yeah. And I think that it's a give and take in terms of like where we're all coming from and we all have uh, great discussions. But I think at that level, there's something amazing because I always said like, what's the best thing playing with Jordan? If you're not Michael Jordan, it's the privilege yeah. to play on that team with the best, yep. you know? And I, that's sort of what I enjoy at least from a career standpoint, like obviously it's the, it's so fucking fun on the set. Like we are bullshitting with each other and always we're just trying to make each other laugh in the scenes. Like, Whoa. you know, and it's, it is, How um, so? give me an example. So there's, um, and, and they're the Kings of improv. So I don't know what's going to make it in. It's so funny, but like, there's this one thing where, um, where it takes place in Atlanta and Jamie, uh, it's it's sort of based on his life with his daughter Corinne, who's like a superstar in her own right. You know, like she co-hosts Beach Shazam with him. She's an executive producer, Emmy winner, wow. um, runway model for Dolce and Gabbana. Like she does it all. This girl's yeah. like a boss, and um, it's about his life with his daughter. And so they're always getting into these things where they're like, you know. They're, they're, it's sort of that thing where it's like, I'm your cool dad, just listen to me. And she's like, dad, you're not cool. You know, dad, yeah. stop embarrassing me because yeah. that's what his daughter used to always say. And um, so there's this one scene where it takes place in Atlanta and Jamie improvised this line to his sister who's played by the amazing uh, Portia Coleman and um, where he goes like, uh, oh yeah, man, you know, Tyler Perry has a new studio over here. And Danny, he, she goes, can you hook me up with, I can't remember who she said the actor. Oh, Donald Glover. She's like, could you hook me up with Donald Glover? He goes, I could hook you up with Danny Glover. <laughs> And then, um, you know, like there's, and then I run in from outside. I'm like, and I went, man, you'll never guess who I just saw outside. Danny Glover doing wind sprints, man. He's definitely getting too old for that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and like just little yeah. things that aren't, that are about making people laugh, but also like contributing in a way that's not about you. Yeah. Like to, when you, when people come in and do like one liners and stuff that to add to the thing that it, it it's not about like topper to topper to topper to topper like who's the funniest guy it's about like if there's a moment do it but you do it when it's right and yeah. when it's not you nobody's like well you should have said something yeah. there and to have that freedom and that chemistry and but listen we pitch stuff all the time that goes like you know yeah but but, but you have to i mean dude it's just life. throwing darts at the wall yeah, yeah if you, you're not I mean, there's so many cliches for that. that you know, you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. Yeah, yeah. The, the and so swings, that's why the, go be be. Do you think bold. porn stars say that? You miss uh, the shots you don't take. That's yeah. why they're like they never get out of the way of the shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all wearing bird jerseys. <laughs> and he said that. Oh no, Wayne Gretzky. Wait, porn stars. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about um, I'm talking about Wayne Gretzky. Oh, the porn star. The, porn <laughs> the great one. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, always with a hat trick. Takes three at a time. I like the say. idea. <laughs> I like the idea. Every time she comes, it's like goal. I like the sport. <laughs> Still applies. Same word. I like the idea of a porn star though, like being very cerebral and like using cliches like that, and just or being in between takes, being like trying to give advice, being like, "We gotta go for it. You got no. You gotta look. You. I think you have what it takes. I. I just think that I see a little bit of me in you. I see a little bit of me in you as you're, he's in. You're about to feel a, <laughs> a lot, lot of, me of me in you. In you, but yeah. but. The but, porn movie All of Me. It's a remake of Steve Martin's <laughs> film and Lily Tomlin. But where he gives a lot, he's like, look, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. 
And I think that if you don't go for it now, timing's everything, right? Like it's, you want to do it. You have nothing to hold you back here. You got to go for it. And action. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to... Wait, right before he goes into you, shoot your shot. <laughs> there is a... There is a All right, put it in a butt. There's like a Gary V. I, I, I'm talking. <laughs> for the porn set. <laughs> yeah. the, the guy or, or girl who's there for mental health. Yeah. I thought I came up with a character one time of of a guy. You know how there's like James Dean who's a porn star. Yeah. So I thought of a guy named Thickless Cage, <laughs> and it was just a guy who so, sort of looked like Nicholas Cage who did porn, and he was famous for coming in sixty seconds <laughs> and then leaving. That's amazing. And he called every girl Eleanor. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! How about Jeff Bridges? Don't move. Oh. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> oh. Wait, wait, wait. Real quick. I'm going to need to have a couple different celebs. Oh. It's, it's a, hey, now that's what I call celebrity uh, fit, come, fit, shots. come shots or finishing. All right, here we go. <laughs> Jeff Bridges. Uh. Seth Rogen. Uh. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh. And then when there's a little bit at the end, it's a little bit at the end, he goes, eh, 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 eh. Tom Hanks. Ah, oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, 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 oh. He probably yells out Rita Wilson's name in bed. He's like, Wilson, Wilson. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Guys, I was big. Uh, J- <laughs> Wait, he's saying all movie titles while he's but coming. His own film. <laughs> I made a splash I'm there. I made a splash there. We're in Philadelphia. Okay, Tom. We gave you two of them, buddy. The Tom Hanks, the Nut Collection. Oh, my God. That was one of the first combo pack DVDs I bought at Best Buy. Splash and Big. It was Splash, Big, I think, and Turner and Hooch. And it was like you can get all three. And it was when DVDs were still happening. And I was like, whoa, this is like, I was like, I don't need this. But like all three right now. So that's like the socks, right? So I always say when you go to get value pack socks, men are so homophobic. Yeah. That if there's like a pink or a green sock in there, there needs to be like five other navy socks. So funny. And so the wives are like, why don't you wear the pink ones? And then, then he's like, oh, I'm not gay. <laughs> they always come Isn't with the great? packs. The, the, by the way, just One. The, the, ra- the rationale of guys it's, when they think like even I'm going back to Dallas this weekend. It's a year. No joke from when I was there last year and, and, sh- and things shut down. Literally that weekend, people were canceling shows. Right. I finished the shows. And people started to, to do the elbow. Right. Which even right now, like, I mean, I'm already a white guy who's fucking up handshakes left and right. So now even with, with COVID, I'm just like, hey, you want me to bump your elbow? or The chicken s- wing? Suck your fist? Like, what do you want me to, like, uh, uh, give me, uh, you know, it's just, you know, you because everyone has a different level of comfort of course, with, like, just hit course. that or I shake the, my hand. You know or, what I do is I do the kid and play where you just hit the ankles. That's a good move. Who's going to just do the headbutt? The fucking no, uh, Mao Zedong? Who is Zen Zedel? What's a... Uh, uh, Who's the fucking soccer? Zangief. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mao, Mao Zedong. Zen Zedu. <laughs> we just oh, was, we lost all the, the Chinese audience. Who we the, lost them all. Who was the soccer player in the World Cup that headbutted um, in the World Cup? You don't remember that? Oh, Rashad, do you know who I'm talking about? Do you mind pulling that up? Thanks, doggy. There's, um, there's, there's a guy. I used to do a joke about it. I was like saying, like, I wish I worked... At like a TGI Fridays or a Chili's, because he left. He headbutted somebody and then he got ejected, but he walked off knowing that like I'm out. And when that to was Chili's? His, that was his Jerry Maguire. <laughs> that was his Jerry Maguire who's coming with me. Except he didn't ask anyone to come with him. He just did that and was like, I know that I'm done and walked off. And yeah, I was like, yeah. What a great way to like, you know, quit a job or that's Italy defender Marco. Yeah, Marco. All right, not even Maserati. close. No, no, no. no, oh, it, no it, it, Zidane yeah. Zidane. What? Zidane Zidane. Yeah. Zin, Zin, Zinedine Zidane. That's right. Zinedine. What did I say? Mao Zedong. Yeah, Mao Zedong. They said Zanzadu. <laughs> Zanzadu. <laughs> Zanza. You know, <clears throat> I think for that, I think that we're going to get, I think we're going to go back to normal in a lot of ways that people don't realize. Really? because Better than ever? Um, I think that we- Or just- come back i think we're gonna i think that we're aware number one i think that people are going to uh not take things for granted Mm -hmm. they won't for a while and then they'll be like it's fine it's human nature it is to even i mean think about we adjust by the way we adjust and we have since the beginning of time that's what we do we evolve and we adapt but humans also uh 
you know, learn and then it's just, you know, like even think about any traumatic thing in your life or a yeah. death where you go, man, I am, life is precious. I'm, yeah, those next few days, you're definitely a lot more cognizant of like, and then it's back to heroin. <laughs> but you're, no, you're, no, you're, but I, this I th- fall on CBS. Back to heroin. <laughs> Short episode. The, the whole Ooh, spoiler alert. It doesn't last past the pilot. Uh, <laughs> it was supposed to be on Quibi. I didn't think it was like it was perfect for oh, it. Oh boy, Quibi. R. By R. the R. way, R. I. P. whoa, wanted it to work. I can't believe it. you can't really get out the full name. It's like Quib. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> I remember I tried to download it, and my phone was like, "Yeah, dude, come, I mean, come on, come on." You really think like? Let Bro. me just. Hey, let's get Grubhub back have, up here. Would you rather have Doodle Jump? <laughs> Other stuff that people don't what use is anymore. That? Doodle. Is that like a Pokemon like, Go? Boop, 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 What's Doodle Jump? Doodle Jump was like um, it was like the one of the a stupid game that not stupid. Those probably guys are billionaires and I'm nothing. But I just like <laughs> this. Like, it's it's like a little cubert looking thing, and you just sort of jumped up. And then uh, I remember that Kevin Durant did a commercial, and then he just said the word Doodle Jump. And I remember thinking like, man, this is pretty famous. Kevin Durant is saying it. I mean, that that's enough, you know? It is. And then um, it never got to the level of like a Candy Crush or something. Yeah. But it's like. Whatever. Well, Enough kids played it. Yeah. Pokemon Downloaded. Go, the fact that that even lasted as long as it did. It's unbelievable. It's still mind-blowing. It's incredible. And people died. Yes. Right? Rashad, will you look that up for me real quick? I'm so sorry. How many people died from Pokemon Go? All right, so you think when the world comes I back- I think that we're going to get, I think that people sort of look at look at the tragedies that we've had that were, um, obviously, I'm speaking in America right now. So, because going over to Asia, Asians- in general, where, whoa, 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 whoa. Go on. Sorry. Ori. No, no. <laughs> Oreos. You didn't let me finish. I'm at the great cookie. How dare you? Um, but when you when I went over to Asia, well, it's, uh, to be try, they weren't doing this in India. So you've been over there so many times. A right? lot of times. And, and I love it over there. And they when they're sick, even if it's a cold or whatever, they wear masks. So like when people hear it's so funny because people yeah 256 deaths for what pokemon the fuck and 150,000 traffic accidents wow and okay. in the first 148 days this is a pandemic i mean dude how is that not talked about more when i would see people walking around or walking into traffic, to traffic looking at their phone trying to be like, i got a bow bazaar is the last thing you say boom you're, what doing, are you're doing the eulogy right now <laughs> You know he 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 died. He I can't died the way he, he lived. Yeah. Looking for Balthazar's. <laughs> He's like, what did he say word? before he got hit by the truck? Like, I'm Bulbasaur. All right. You know what? I mean, and this, and by the way, I'm glad. Did, did you look for Pokemon Go? No. How do you no, know he's still alive? How do you know? <laughs> how did you know that? It's, huh? I'm I know. Yeah, I know Pikachu. Hilarious! I know grown adult men that were like, <laughs> would would show up to shows of mine and be like, "Dude, sorry, I was late, man. I was a uh, got a uh, found a P- Pikachu or a who who else is there? Uh, fucking Yurtle Squirt. What's Yurtle? that guy's name? Squirtle. 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 I was close. Yurtle Squirt. <laughs> Damn, very close, bro. I sound like a, an AI <laughs> who didn't go. He's like, I'll I'll read it later, and he only read half of it, and he's like, I man, Yurtle Squirt. By the way, also what like the director says to like the you know C level yeah. porn star when Guys, he's like, hey, do that trick you use that Yurtle Squirt. That's like Yurtle the turtle when you like pile up on them. Dresses, you know that re- no. Dr. Seuss book, Yurtle the turtle. No, it's like when the the turtle Can you who gets say on that top. anymore. Dr. Seuss? Yeah, yeah. But you have to apologize first. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? You have to say trigger warning. What, what I'm going to talk about. Trigger warning, guys. Going to talk about Dr. Seuss. Um, what was the whole thing with that? W- that there were um, there were racist. One fish, two fish, engaged in the military. One fish, what two was- fish, three fish, Jew fish. <laughs> <laughs> that seems weird. It was gefilte fish. Just call it gefilte fish. <laughs> it was a Jew fish. He, he, has, what, he has the keeper. This sounds like Seuss, by the way. Seuss, listen. Theodor Geisel was his real name. <laughs> It was. Yeah, Theodor Geisel. The Grinch, definitely Jewish. Oh, my God. He goes, hey. Definitely Jewish. Definitely Jewish taking toys from the who's. Who's? Who's are these? These are mine. Yeah, and so angry about Christmas. Yeah, exactly. He wanted to turn Christmas into Hanukkah. Hanukkah. He goes, not only do I hate this, I wish it was eight days and worse. (laughs) (laughs) That's such a good Seuss. And there's no Seuss. There's so many characters that I'm like, we need to see these biopics. Well, Chef Boyardee. Oh. Hey, man, haven't seen. Do you want to know that when I was in college, I started to write a Chef Boyardee biopic because I Let's go. Let's finish that pick. Because I'd get so high and so passionate about the idea that this guy's not portrayed anywhere. Just the same way I'm portraying Vince McMahon for the first time. If you told me, hey, what do you want your follow-up to be? 
It's Boyardi. Bro, I, this guy, his story, there's enough of a story out there of like how he like created this pasta sauce, how he just, you know, was a, a chef and then started to kind of fuck around, make his own shit. But then it kind of like stops and you're like, well, where's the rest of his story? Like, and he's got some of it's kind of, I'm like, dude, if he, you create some, you know, drug problems and like, yeah. you know, infidelities and all the stuff that's, but have it be a little campy, maybe. Um, I, dude, it's. Or it's a really like dark some, dude, drama with Christian Bale. I don't know. All right, listen. All right. Guys, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not making macaroni anymore. Huh? I'm not making macaroni anymore. No but that's how, a staple. No matter how much you torture me, you need to let me out of this prison. I'm going to tell the truth about this place, okay? I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to tell the world. You know, this sauce you've been making in jail, It's. I think people would like it. You think so? <laughs> I don't know who this guy yeah, is, his roommate in prison. Bro, he can't turn around so fast in that. Right? Wait, Isn't that how it is? There's always, always like, a problem in the lifetime shit. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, but I think we could do this. He goes, you think so? And then there's <laughs> <laughs> and then there's one scene in the movie where someone's like, yo, uh, Boyard, Boyardi. And then he just goes, <sighs> it's Boyardi. <laughs> and that's the end of the trailer. That's the truth. <sighs> yeah. This summer. Yeah. Uh, coming to Quibi. But there's... <laughs> But there's so many like fictional. Oh, but I, I always thought I would do a I do a uh, I do a uh, a drug addict. By the way, that's the the music in the trailer. It's definitely. Oh, I thought you, that rap. was a, that was CAA calling guys. We want to do this. <laughs> but that's in like it's a definitely. Oh yeah. Like after the like it's Boyardi. <laughs> then there's like yeah some hardcore rap and like quick this shots, summer. some explosions for no reason in the kitchen, <laughs> and him walking it, out flicking a cig. He puts a cigarette on a, de- a guy that he just cut up, and he goes. Now that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> yeah. Or I was gonna say he, he walks into the restaurant and the guy's complaining about the food and he puts a cigarette in his rav puts a cigarette out in his ravioli and then says, uh He goes, What are you doing? <laughs> he goes into the rant. He goes, Get off my set, get out of my kitchen. <laughs> no no no, don't you stand there. <laughs> Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you're enjoying this episode. Obviously, it's a very difficult time for everyone right now. We're all uh, challenged in finding a day-to-day routine that uh, that makes our lives uh, consistent and awesome. And if there's something that's interfering with your happiness right now or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. Uh, BetterHelp is a professional counseling service online, private, and it's so convenient. Um, I've used it for a little bit now. It's truly the only way uh, that I've found uh, to help get uh, my own issues dealt with on my own time uh, at my own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions plus chat and text with your licensed professional counselor right now. They're specialized in depression, anger, stress, anxiety, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief or relationships, uh, sleeping, which I have a lot of uh, trouble with, trauma, self-esteem, anything that you share with them is confidential. And guess what? If you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, at any time, you can request a new one for no additional charge. There's 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states available worldwide. And again, there's four ways to communicate with them. Text, chat, phone, and video. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. It's available on any desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS apps. Schedule a video or phone session, generally weekly, unless your therapist schedules more, uh, unless you just are really not sleeping and need to get some uh, some some additional chats in. Uh, there's broad expertise in the network, which may not uh, which may not be locally available in many areas. Financial aid is available for those who qualify. It's secure. It's convenient. It's professional. And above all, it's affordable, all right? It's truly the most affordable option I've found. So right now, all ALN listeners are going to get 10% off your first month with a discount code about last night. So why not get started today and start making some changes for the better in your life? You deserve it. So go to betterhelp.com slash about last night. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor that you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash about last night. Betterhelp.com slash about last night and get 10% off your first month with the promo code about last night. And now back to the episode. What's up with serial characters that don't have their life together? Like Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs or like the- uh, uh, Hey, that's the Cocoa Puffs bird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's just like, the guy's got a problem. Most of the birds do. Yeah. Toucan Sam is- Follow your nose. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah just yeah. geeking out, tweaking Fruit out. Fruit Loops that are frosted? Out. Yikes. Yeah, it's cocaine. <laughs> um, but I'm, also, what's the other one where, where they'll never let... Silly Rabbit Tricks are for kids? Yeah, which, by the way... He's the mascot. How did he not work that into the deal where it's like, I'll do these fucking commercials, but give me the thing that I want. Instead I of the rabbit, the kids are like, Silly Rabbit. He goes, you fuckers, I introduced you to this shit. Also, you fat fuck. Caleb, like, you're almost 400 pounds and you're nine. Oh, Don't brother. you think it's time to share... With a or to cartoon switch over rabbit. to kicks. Also, they go, <laughs> switch to kicks. They go, I would love to see a commercial where he's like, tricks are for kids. And then the rabbit's like, yeah, kids with self-discipline, dude. Yeah. Have you looked in the hey, mirror? Kids who've had a blood test recently. I thought you were your mom. <laughs> yeah. Your tits are bigger than hers. Yeah, hey, the, the, the tricks are for kids. Yeah, not beanbag chairs. <laughs> As he like slides it over. <laughs> Or what about what's the other one where um, can't get it off of that sugar bear? Sugar oh, bear? That dude's the honey high smacks as fuck. Yeah. Frog or no? The no, sugar no. bear. No, the, the sugar bear. Yeah. Can't get enough of heroin. Like, oh, yeah. come on. The, the, the shit is just shit. Captain is Crunch, shit. too, is just, I mean, Captain Crunch has been me too. Crunch berries. Yeah, he's been me too. He's been. Uh, That's why he has to be at sea. <laughs> Maritime law. <laughs> you can't me too, me at sea. <laughs> I can play with my crunch berries and no one cares. Ugh, is, that, is that what's in this? How about the, uh, you know, they? there's a new Tony the Tiger voice and I know because I read for it. You did? But it was like any, it was, you know, it wasn't like a, they asked for me, but I spent. Yo, that great. Over three hours. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Send this one too. Yo. They're pretty good. Yo. I'm these, just kidding. Hey, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, they're so good. They're great. I must have spent. No joke, I just said three hours, over two. Brother, I- Because I, it's my favorite it cereal, too. and I wanted it so bad. And now I see him playing all the time, and he's doing like FaceTimes with Shaq. I'm like, fuck, oh, dude. Oh, dude, he's yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, no, Frosted Flakes have got the, t-, you know, like, and again, it was another one of those things where it was like, Tony in the vein of Tony, but do your own Tony. So I'm like trying to find that ground of like, they're great, but yeah. also be like, uh, you know, hey, you know, put a little something what like Tony. Yeah, <laughs> what Tony Danza or Tony Soprano. Yeah. Hey, listen, they're great. <laughs> oh, they're fucking great. They're fucking great. Hey, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, I mean, but oh, you're so, uh, what Tony? That's so funny. Yeah. By the way, Danza missed opportunity not getting some sort Dude, of. These are great. But just, or maybe it's all the Tonys reading oh. for it. They recast, and it's Tony Starks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> these are great. <laughs> These are great. So good. I, uh, but they're not Fruit Loops, but they're not. They're also not Cocoa Pebbles, but what is Cocoa Pebbles? Uh, just a lot of chocolate rocks. There's a lot of chocolate, chocolate rocks. Chocolate rocks. And look, but, I like rocks. I like to smoke rocks. I like to eat rocks. Obviously, rocks, that was old me. I'm just that was old me. This is new me now. New me now. I put it on Facebook. I don't know why you didn't like it, but fuck, it's my journey, YOLO. But your journey is your journey too, so. Obviously, and I, so I would say like they're great. Like for me, they're, they're great. For me, they're great. They're okay. They're not bad. They're not bad. But they're they're, they're also not terrific. They're, they're not terrific. I wouldn't not, say that. They're not fantastic. I'll tell you what fantastic is. Uh, here, here's what, it, what what what's fantastic. Well, to tell you? me what it is. Tell Fant- me what it is. So look, if I go to uh, Rite Aid late at night, I want to get some soup. I want to get some candles, some deodorant. Not in that order. Yolo. TMI. But so if I'm getting something for my wife, I'm getting what? <laughs> A diaphragm. <laughs> <laughs> candles. <laughs> they're like, listen, uh, we love it, <laughs> but. This can't even be a YouTube ad. It's too long. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they go guys, we, again. The line is, <laughs> they're great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> guys, we blew the budget for the year on the Tony's Tony Stark and Tony Stark. Oh my Dressed god! Just you know the tiger. <laughs> oh, so great. But all though. the Tonys. <laughs> Tony, 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 the band. Oh, my God. Brother, you're so right. This was a missed opportunity. How many? T- okay, so let's truly go through them. Tony Soprano, Tony Stark. So we're getting fictional, too. Dan- yeah, whatever. Tony Danza, Tony, uh, Tony, 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 uh, Tony Montana. Tony. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> These are fucking great. <laughs> and, uh, and it's the cocaine. Yeah. Putting it on the frost. <laughs> yeah, and then a- he has a tiny tiger and goes, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> What do you think? And then the tiger goes, "Dear girl, right?" Yeah. <laughs> Tony, uh, Tony, Tony, uh, Tony. Man, I don't know who's people don't go as Tony anymore. Yeah, it's really kind of an old school name. It is. It's not as like you know Tony Bourdain, Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, yeah. Does he? You think he went as Tony? I, I I've never gone as Tony in my life. I've never said it. I'm always as Anthony. Is this Bourdain? Yeah. Nice. 
and bees frosted flakes are great. Oh yeah, that is good. That's great. You got the the cadence. Yeah, <clears throat> it's Tony isn't as um, you know. Sometimes you go like my aunt Shirley, born yeah. in an era. How many more Shirleys are there? No, her name is Shirlston. Yeah, what else falls in that name? Shirley. Yeah, in that category. Um, Beatrice. Well, you know what's the crazy one is is Jack, right? Jack's not a real name. How it's, so? It's a nickname of John, which doesn't make sense because it's the same syllable. Yeah. So like Jack Kennedy, right? Yeah. His real name is John F. Kennedy. So Jack, for a lot of, I mean, people are naming it now, but they're also naming themselves Starbucks cups. You know what I mean? It's like, we're living in a bad time. People. Yeah. Um, but Jack is, I don't know how that name came about, or I don't know how that became a, uh, a nickname. We'll be right back. Yes. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Um, That's the name of this podcast. <clears throat> we'll be right back. Yeah. Should be. We'll be right back. We're back. <laughs> If you had, <clears throat> if you had one commercial out there, yeah, that you could be the spokesman for a product. Like when you get this show comes out, blows up, mm. you're unreachable. By the way, I want to tell you real quick what yeah. you asked me earlier. If there was something, <clears throat> something that I could do a character, you know, like I could be. Oh yeah, I always wanted to be Harry Houdini, but I'm Whoa. way too tall. You are, but we are. He's Eastern European Jew, and same as me. Me too. And so, so yeah, you and I. Could both do it, or I wanted to be Zero Lenny Bruce oh, because I man. think that I look yeah. enough like Lenny Bruce. Wow, John! And, like with my eyes and sort of the way that my hair is stringy. Fuck yeah, dude! Like that is something that I definitely think that one of those two guys, and obviously <clears throat> Dustin Hoffman did a very specific thing in Lenny. Yeah, but I feel like it's cool. Like they've always been throwing around the Kinnison forever and the prior biopic, and you know all you, this. stuff. I don't think you could do prior. Kennison for sure. Well, I could have before, you know, 2020. And uh, you just blame everything on yeah. 2020. Oh, yeah. yeah COVID yeah, yeah. really screwed up uh, my ability to. to uh, uh, brother, I was going to be Don King when Jamie was yeah. doing Dyson. <laughs> Thanks, 2020. There are people out there that are throwing that around, though. What? Just putting COVID in place of their lack of Being enthusiasm able to, for well, trying to create opportunities or whatever. Like, yeah. You can't do was, Mrs. Dodd Fighter Day, 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like this close to like, dude, I was just about to fucking go on that cruise with Cher, man. Fucking COVID. You're like, oh, oh yeah, like where? Also, because when people say stuff like what that. What was the route? Who fa yeah, who, <laughs> who fact checks? Brother. Who's no, saying, let me see that so email exchange. Can I tell you, people in, I had a joke that I was trying to work on about lying, where people lie in general so much, but COVID, there's no fact checking going oh. on. So people are like, yo, I was baking like 10 banana breads a week. Uh, were you breaking yeah. 10 loaves why don't of you, bread? Why don't you post it on the gram? Yeah, yeah. Come on, dude, that's dude, not for that. His girlfriend's like, I got, he got one. Yeah. They're one in six months. <laughs> yeah. But they, <clears throat> they, there's such an idea of, of just like people go, oh, dude, I was working out like every single day. Oh, really? Were you? Because you, you literally gained 30 yeah. pounds. <laughs> Like, and by the way, no shame, but it's like people, because there's no fact checking and they're not posting as much, yeah. they can say whatever they did. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. It's like, yeah. Like there's no, and there's no, um, I guess COVID police or, um, or, or, um, I guess just the, the honor system. People no, just, well, the COVID police are definitely, it's like, the, uh, like social media. Where they're like, someone, you didn't wear your mask and you have to write like, no, this yeah. picture was taken 10 years ago. You, you still think I'm 20 years old or whatever? <laughs> Have you, uh, I know we got to wrap this up. <clears throat> Have you found yourself in a Karen situation where you've been like, man, I almost <clears throat> said something so, in that target to that woman or in that, on that So flight. I was in line to, uh, this, I, I swear to, this is absolutely what I was telling, you know, because people, I actually had been asked this before because I did a whole thing, a, a Karen routine. And someone's like, well, what are your real experiences with them? Because I, you know, I was trying not to, I mean, I could call people out individually, but so I was, I was on a, I was at a Starbucks actually in an airport coming back. This was right before uh, the, the lockdown. And I was coming back from a standup. I can't remember where I was, but I'm in Starbucks and I'm sending a photo to a girl yeah. and I'm taking a, a, you know, and you could, you could do that before 2020, you know? And um, so I'm sending a photo in line at Starbucks and my phone is up and I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sending a video. Like here I am, I'm at the airport, I finally made Wait, it, whatever. A video dick, a, a, di a dick video? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I've got, hey guys, will you hold this? Dude's like, <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a Trenty cup just for, uh, you know, a scale? <laughs> so um, uh, I could before <laughs> 2020. And so I, I'm in line and I'm taking, I, I'm taking a video and I'm talking, and this woman in front of me, white woman, mid to late 30s, turns around in a crowded airport yeah. and turns around and goes, 
are you filming me? Oh my God. And it, everyone in the Starbucks turned because it was such a crazy thing. She wanted that moment. She, <clears throat> she so, was almost like overacting. So I go, I looked at her and I go, and I, I, I I'm telling you this, this, I go, I go, no, I go, I'm, I'm filming me. And she goes, bullshit. She's like, you were just filming me. And I turned my camera around to her and everyone could see it. And I played her back the video and she was like, oh, well, I mean, it looked like you were filming me. Yeah. And then she went say? back. No apologies. Hold on. Let me tell you what happened. So I get on the plane and um, I'm, uh, tra oh, I'm traveling with my buddy and his dad. We went to go see a Duke game and I was in North Carolina and um, we're in the front of the plane. Like, and uh, this woman walks past me and you know how, like when you walk in line, you have to stand there sometimes and right. wait for them to yeah. go. And I'm not looking at her and she knows that she was wrong. And she won't, so she just looks at me and goes, I mean, it looked like you were filming me. Like not any awareness oh of like, God. and that isn't a Karen in terms of a race thing, yeah. but it's like the entitlement yep. to yell at the top of your lungs yeah. and just to accuse me of something that I proved in not even like my bad, I'm sorry guys, I'm flying a little stressed right now. Something that we, we all laugh about and understand. Double down. Doubled and then tripled down on the plane. Wow. And the guy who was in front of me at Starbucks, like when she turned away and got her coffee, he just looked at me and went, yikes. Yeah. Like, what, yeah. was, what that? was that about? Um, it was crazy. Uh, I love you. I love you, man. I'm so, I can't believe it's this been. This flew by. Yeah, we, we've, we'll add it we down. covered everything. We'll add it down to 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. None of this is usable. No. Um, Let me know when we roll. When we start rolling. The uh, show premieres April 14th. On Netflix, on Dad, Netflix. stop embarrassing me. All the episodes at once, probably. I think so. We don't, you know, we we have gotten. I mean, Netflix is one of those. They're so smart about the rollout. They know what they're doing better yeah. than anybody. So, like, they're. We haven't seen a trailer. We haven't seen anything. I've seen production still. Can't wait when they start rolling it out. It's going to be huge. I can't wait. Jonathan got on Instagram and Twitter, uh, and then tour dates. I'm sure you'll start posting once yeah. the show comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love you, man. I love you, bud.